After almost five years in an open beta state, NVIDIA's GeForce Now cloud gaming service has officially launched. But even with its long tenure in the cloud gaming space, if you're just hearing about it for the first time, let's go over some of the basics. So GeForce Now is a cloud gaming service that allows users to run graphically intense AAA titles in the cloud and simply stream the image to a local device like a PC, laptop or phone, but we'll get into compatible devices later. Now, if this all sounds familiar, You'd be right, if you're a subscriber to the channel, you'll know uh, my main daily driver is the Shadow Cloud PC, which I use for both gaming and uh, workflow, like making these videos. And more recently, you may have seen similar companies try to launch services like this, like Microsoft with their Project X Cloud, uh, which we talked about here on the channel, so I'll link to it up here. Uh, and also Google with Stadia, which we definitely talked about on the channel here. <laughs> and just a side note, part of me thinks that Google may have actually been aware of this launch date for GeForce Now, because it's one of the only reasons I can think of why they would launch in such a like half-baked, should have been a beta kind of state. So with GeForce Now officially launched, what's the deal? So unlike Google Stadia, who's trying to both be the game engine and a storefront uh, with NVIDIA's GeForce Now, they're not trying to sell you anything, and there's no need to repurchase all of your old games. Instead, the GeForce Now platform supports around 30 free-to-play games like Fortnite, Warframe, and Destiny 2. Which, by the way, I love that like, uh, GeForce Now and xCloud have both very casually added Destiny 2 to just a giant list of games which are available. Whereas for Stadia, it was like their main selling point, like with the Founders Edition. We'll give you a copy of Destiny 2 free-to-play game. <laughs> but I digress, uh, as well as free-to-play games, GeForce Now allows users to connect to existing game libraries and enjoy games they've already purchased in the past. So currently, once you've logged into GeForce Now, you can search for games in Steam, the Epic Game Store, Uplay, Origin, Bethesda, and Battle.net. Now, that doesn't mean that every game ever made is currently supported, but what I'll do is leave a link in the description down below to a full supported games list. How do I get GeForce Now and what's it going to cost me? Well, right now, as of the launch, the GeForce Now application is available on Windows, Android, Mac OS and NVIDIA's dedicated TV device, the NVIDIA Shield. So if you spotted one missing from there, uh, you'd be right. Right now, there's no word of an iOS application uh, and that's pretty much the same as how xCloud launched into their beta. Reason for that seems to be the iOS platform. To get an application through beta into launch, you need to go through Apple's test flight, which there seems to be a lot of restrictions on Apple's part. And one of the big ones seems to be the number of users who can test the application at one time, which you can imagine is kind of an issue when you're trying to stress test and launch a cloud gaming platform. Now, once you sign on to GeForce Now, users are presented with two different options, either a free tier or a founders tier costing $4.99 per month, with a couple of differences between the two. So let's get into it. So on the free tier, you'll essentially have to queue for a virtual machine to become free. So in my testing of the service so far, uh, I've only waited between sort of two and three minutes. So okay, no big deal. But obviously that could be subject to change. Either uh, wait times go up or go down based on GeForce Now's popularity or how many servers they add. But once you've found a machine on the free tier, that gaming session will only last one hour uh, with a little anxiety inducing countdown clock that pops up every 10 minutes, uh, counting down to the end of that hour. So at the end of that hour, you'll be disconnected from your game session and you'll have to requeue to be reconnected. So if you're playing a single player game, I can see this maybe not being as big a deal. You know, the countdown tells you you're getting close to the hour, you save, wait to reconnect and then carry on. Uh, but with online games, I can imagine this being a, a real issue with disconnecting you at a critical point. So if you're not down with that, as we mentioned, there's a Founders tier costing $4.99 per month. Uh, but important thing to note is it actually comes with a 90 day free trial. So you won't actually pay anything for the first three months. So a couple of added benefits on the Founders tier. Firstly, there's no queuing for a virtual machine. You will jump straight to the front of those queues. Your game sessions are extended from one hour to six hours, at which point you'll still be disconnected. But to reconnect, again, you'll jump straight to the front of the queue. And as well as that, the Founders tier comes with Ray Trace supporting hardware, allowing users to turn on RTX for supported games like Metro Exodus. So like all of the services we mentioned at the start, uh, there are some requirements on the user side, the most important being your internet connection. So GeForce now requires a minimum local speed of 15 megs, but recommends 25 or higher. But standard cloud gaming rules apply here where the better the internet, the better your experience is going to be. Wherever possible, Ethernet over Wi-Fi is always king. But if you do have to use Wi-Fi, 5 gigahertz band over 2.4. But seeing as not all ISPs are created equal and some still conform to the archaic business model of data capping, come on guys, 
It's 2020. GeForce Now also gives you three modes to choose from with varying levels of data consumption. First is Balanced, estimated to use around 10 gig of data per hour. Then Data Saver, which is around four gigs per hour. And finally Competitive at six gigs per hour. So at this point, this is not my full review of the service, more of an FYI, but I have had the opportunity to test it for the last few days, uh, long enough to give you my initial thoughts. Uh, starting with the business model, I think GeForce Now hits a clever target audience of existing PC gamers who maybe can't afford to replace or upgrade their current PC, or are maybe looking to take their gaming on the go with a laptop or an Android phone. Again, sorry iPhone. <laughs> Running similar latency tests to what I performed when I tried xCloud and Stadia. Uh, so far I'm super impressed with GeForce Now and it's low latency when using controllers and also it's consistent picture quality, no spikes, no tearing, no pixelation that I could kind of visibly see albeit with that picture quality maxing out at 1080p at 60 frames per second. Seeing as it's a brand new application, uh, there's definitely some small user experience things that could be improved. Uh, specifically, once you've launched GeForce Now, you choose a game in an existing library, it kind of just relaunches you into that library, at which point you need to select the game you initially selected in GeForce Now. And if you choose anything other than that game, it will kick you out and the process will start again. But that's everything you need to know about GeForce Now at launch, my initial thoughts, uh, but I'd be super interested to get your thoughts on NVIDIA's new platform, uh, their business model as a whole, the target audience they're going for, and also how this service stacks up to other services we talked about. But if you enjoyed the video, you found it somewhat helpful, a like rating would be appreciated. If you have not already, remember to subscribe to the channel, and as always, I shall see you in the next one.